Everlasting Father, we give you all the glory and the praise. Yes, and we magnify you for what you have done and what you are doing. Thank you for the success of the Just Ended Seminar. The crowd that you came, the miracles that are happening, the testimonies that are coming as a result of it. All glory be to you, for you alone is the doer. We bless your name and we thank you for this month. We thank you for the team for the month. And we thank you for today. We thank you, God, that you have filled your temple. We have, you have filled your church with this multitude. I pray, Holy Ghost, take over and bless your people. Enlighten your people. Empower your people. Lift them from where they are onto a higher level by the light of your word. Give us understanding in your word. Open the understanding of our eyes. Let every person here be enlightened in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that whatever challenge that is in their life, the power of your word should turn it around in the name of Jesus. I pray anybody sick here, Lord, as your word is coming, let healing take place. Anybody confused here, as the word is coming, Lord, let there be a clarity. Anybody depressed here, as your word is coming, let depression vanish. Anybody under any sort of stress, as your word is coming, let it vanish. In the name of Jesus. Father, they have come upon Mount Zion. The blood is being sprinkled. The angels are here. God, our Father, the judge of all is here. Therefore, Father, judge anything in their life that is not of you. And let the name of our Lord Jesus be glorified forever and ever. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. I have a covenant of success with God. I have a covenant of success with God. I have a covenant of success with God. Every true born again child of God must understand that God himself, the Almighty, has a master plan of success for us in all aspects of life. He said, I know the plans I have for you there are plans of good to bring you to an expected end. So that means success. If I tell you I have a good plan for you, good plan cannot, cannot be anything but success. Amen. Because anything less than success is not good. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so God's plans for you and I is success. Is success. Is success. His divine way for us is to be successful in every area of our lives. Every area of our lives. That is his divine plan. Success. 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 It, it pains the heart of our Lord Jesus when he sees his children struggling in life. It breaks his heart. It, it brings pain to his heart. Because Jesus is paid the price for us to be successful in every area of our lives. He has done all that has to be done for you and I to be success in this life. Glory be to God. And that is why I say we are not going to disappoint him. We are not going to break his heart. But we are going to succeed the way he wants us to succeed. So that his name will be glorified. But you know, success is not automatic. There is what we have to do for success to begin to happen in our lives. And these are the things that the Spirit of God is going to open us up to. Listen to me, church. Listen to me, precious ones. The devil has no say when it comes to your success. Amen. He has no say. The only thing he can do is to deceive you not to line up yourselves with the demands of success. As scripture puts it. That's all he can do. Because he knows as long as you are not doing it, success will never come. So he rather, what he does is he deceives you not to line up, not to be obedient to scriptural demise that makes for success. But he cannot stop you from succeeding. He does not have the power. Amen. Unfortunately, a lot of people have attributed power to the devil that he doesn't have. When they are not succeeding, they say, oh, you know, the devil is strong. The devil is fighting me. Who told you that? He is only deceiving them not to do what it takes to succeed in God. 
but he can stop you from succeeding. That is why when Jesus was talking to us about success, he never mentioned the devil. Because he's not an issue. Do you understand? Jesus himself took good care of the devil on our behalf. He dealt with him. So success is our birthright. Success is the hallmark of the true children of God. Success is the proof that God is working with us. So every child of God must not struggle in life. Every child of God must not live under the pressure of challenges and all those things in life. Challenges come our way, they are inevitable, but the good thing is that we easily overcome them. Amen. Yes. By the power of the word of God. So success is our hallmark. You, it does not defeat Christ when you are struggling through life. It makes Christianity look upward when you are living in abject poverty. Life is become so hard. And unfortunately, we have some believers that out of ignorance, they have accepted it as a sign of humility and holiness. When they are poor, they said, God wants to teach me humility. That is why he's made me poor. Then Jesus was the most proudest person in the world. Because he wasn't poor. And he paid a price for me to be rich. So Jesus wants to make me proud if they, if they are true. Are you understanding me? Humility is not a sign. I mean, poverty is not a sign of humility. Haven't you seen poor people that are so proud? Mm -hmm. I mean, poor, abject poverty. Yet, they are the proudest people. Talk to some of the people that don't even have homes to, 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 to sleep in. They have no homes, no address. They live bill free. They don't pay bill to anyone. Rent free, no rent to anyone. Everywhere is their home. Talk to them about Christ and listen to the words that will come out of their mouth. And you tell me they are humble. <laughs> so please, don't make that mistake. Poverty. Is not a sign of humility. Amen. And poverty is not from God. Amen. That is why Jesus paid the price. The Bible says he became poor that I, through his poverty, might be rich. Amen. Amen. Our God is the wealthiest person in the world. He owns the whole world. How can I be a son to the wealthiest person in the world and be poor? That's not possible. People brag about the fact that their fathers are billionaires and millionaires. Fine, your father is just a billionaire. My father is a world in here. He owns the world. Amen. Yes. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. And he's my real father. He's your real father. Amen. That is why I told you the other time. God is God over the whole world. But he's not father of all. Know the difference. He's God over the whole world. But he's father to them that have accepted Jesus Christ. Yeah. So he's our real father. Amen. Yes. And our father is a world in here. He owns the world. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. So the first thing that must be in your mind is you are the son, you are the daughter of the worthiest man in the world. Amen. So never think poor. Never. You are the son to the most successful man Amen. in the world. Have Amen. you read it anywhere that God failed in something? No way. God doesn't know failure. You are the son, the daughter to the most powerful being in the world. Amen. Have you ever heard somebody ever conquered God? No. Once upon a time, somebody conquered him. The devil tried it. Look at what happened to him. <laughs> you know, and that one, even that one, he didn't fight God. Are you understand? I always say, don't you ever say the devil fought with God in heaven. How can the devil fight God? It was a Michael that conquered him. No, God, God is too big for the devil to fight. God fighting the devil is like you fighting a, a day old baby. 
How is that possible? How would you fight with a dead old baby? It's, you can't do it. God can't stoop that.